The UK, Italy and Japan have announced that they will jointly develop a next generation fighter jet by 2035. The new Tempest fighter jet will use artificial intelligence and will operate without a pilot on board. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says the joint venture aims to create thousands of jobs in the UK and also strengthen security ties. Mr Sunak will launch the first major phase of the programme later on Friday during a visit to RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire in um, the UK in the Midlands area. Well joining me now is Professor Michael Clark. He is Associate Director of Strategy and Security at Exeter University. Thank you for joining us here on BBC News. Um, isn't this just a, a larger drone? Uh, no, because uh, the, the principle behind it, if it works, sixth generation aircraft, <clears throat> is that one Tempest aircraft, which would have a pilot or maybe two pilots in it, would then control a little air wing of five or six robotic aircraft. So it's more than just a drone. It's, a, uh, it's like an air wing all of its own. And it's similar to what's happening in the maritime sphere, where there are drone ships now. We saw the Ukrainians attack Sevastopol Harbour with entirely drone ships. And it's happening on the, on the battlefield with tanks, drone tanks, controlled by one tank with a crew in it. So this is the direction in which warfare is thought to be going for the 2030s, 2040s, where one active unit, an aircraft, a ship, or a tank, controls a number of robots which are connected to it. How much input will there be from humans, though? Oh, well, it's all about human uh, interaction. Essentially, a, a crew on the ground with a pilot in the air will then actually work out um, how to deploy effectively an air wing of four or five different Tempest aircraft. I mean, that's the, that's the ambition. Whether it will work out that way, we'll have to see. But when you read, when you watch all the whizzy videos that are produced on these things, that's what uh, the, the idea behind it is, that one pilot can control uh, five or six different aircraft all doing different things. Ah, OK, so it's the number of aircraft that be, can be controlled, because I was about to ask you, why would you do this and what's the difference between going on autopilot? Oh, well, the difference is having a, a human being uh, in the loop and having, a, a, as it were, a force multiplier. So the theory is that you don't just have single aircraft with people in them, but aircraft that can control other aircraft. And so it, it allows you to multiply the force. And if you can afford it, then in theory, you can actually produce a lot of aircraft over a target or over an area of the battle, which can all do different things. So it is a, um, it, 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 it's a great idea if it can be worked out, and it's based, of course, on just not robotics, but artificial intelligence and Professor, the ability to Professor Clark, coalesce a lot of material. Professor Clark, um, in terms of UK, Italy and Japan, what do you make of that relationship strategically? What are they all gaining by this? Uh, well, we may gain an international partnership. Uh, the danger, of course, is that we won't have anything, that we'll actually, there'll be fratricide between what we're producing and what the uh, French and the Germans and the Spanish are going to produce and they'll cancel each other out and we won't have any. Um, that's always a possibility. Um, in theory, because of, we're now a, you know, a Brexit country, um, it makes a certain sort of sense to have a, a, a relationship with a country like Japan, which is um, certainly very sophisticated in its uh, technology. So uh, a link with uh, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, maybe even with Sweden, eventually might turn out to be a good linkage if it can be made to work. But we're talking about 15 or 20 years down the line. Um, does this make financial sense? Um, well, it's going to cost a great deal. The, the Germans and the French are spending about 100 billion euros on it. Uh, eventually, we've committed about six billion pounds, two billion of our own, and each of the other partners, Italy um, and Japan, have committed about two billion. <clears throat> it, it's affordable if you choose to afford it, but it will be immensely expensive and it will take 10 or 15 years to produce. So the one thing you can guarantee is it will cost a great deal more and it will take a great deal longer um, than is being advertised at the moment. OK, Professor Michael Clark, fascinating conversation. Thank you very much um, from Exeter University. Thank you. <clears throat>